You want to clap? Clap us in. It's Kyle Meredith with the weekly feed, Rostam and Chris from Vampire Weekend. Fellas, how are you? We're good. good. It's great to sit down with you. It's been a fun little year. I mean, yeah. Your record, Modern Vampires is out. Yes. So uh, congratulations on the success and everything. I know there was you guys had a lot of fun with the setup of this record. I don't think it's to happen every time, but it seems to me these days you almost have to deny that you're even doing a record until it's ready to be out. And it's like, ta-da, surprise, here's a record. I mean, is that you guys just get to have fun or do you actually feel like I can't say I'm doing a record because that's all I'll be able to talk about up until that point? I feel like over, over the years we've learned that uh, if you say something that's somewhat leading or you can can be pulled out of context, that generally it will be pulled out of context. Be like, oh, record's coming out soon, guys. Oh, great to hear, great to hear. Uh, so, I mean, I think that we, this time we, you know, we wanted to make it exciting with some of the videos that we put out before and um, yeah, just get people excited about before it the, the record came out. classified thing, that, that was mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. And the record's on a classified ad, right? That's, that's how we know it's actually coming in the, uh, that, that was the album title too, right? Yeah, well, the, the album cover was this photograph t taken by this guy, Neil Bowensy, who he was working for the New York Times at the time. So some someone at our label thought it would be cool to like connect right. with the oh, New York I Times see. again see, yeah. and announce the album in the classified section there. How many jokes did you guys have to deal with about, did you get the photograph cleared this time? Did that like happen a lot? Um, <laughs> not so much jokes as we just made sure it got Yeah, that was just it, like, not even going to deal with it. Well, yeah, there was actually, because, you know, there's a few buildings in New York. Oh, yeah, right. That are so iconic that you have to clear That's their... trademark thing, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was something that we learned along the way. Uh, but we definitely crossed all the T's and dotted the These are things other bands don't have to deal with, by the way. This is a Vampire Weekend exclusive thing right here, so... Yeah. yeah well done, guys. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm glad. It's I, worth it. I did hear at some point, and, and I don't know if you guys were just having fun with the press or whatever, but somebody said this was like the end of a trilogy. Mm -hmm. Probably didn't probably didn't go into it thinking that, but is it, 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 or was that just kind of fun with press? Because this is one, again, somebody said it, and now we're holding you to it. Well, I think it wasn't something that we necessarily were cognizant of as we were making the records, but when we kind of s s took a step back and listened to sort of the ways that the three albums were connected, we yeah. felt like there was a powerful way in which the three were connected. So we don't know what's going to happen next, but well, that's, it'll... That's, I guess the point I'm getting to, because you, you introduced kind of all these new textures uh, to Modern Vampires. There's these new sounds to it. It's like you guys can really go anywhere now, you know? You don't have to be Vampire Weekend with a Vampire Weekend sound anymore. It seems like you can kind of do something, anything at this point. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think of the album as pretty connected to the other two, but I, I understand why people would think of it just in terms of what's new. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah. I don't know, I, I guess it's to me, it's, you know, those first records sounded so guitar-driven. Uh, guitar yeah. Whereas this one, you know, whatever, whatever it is, the sample of it is, or whatever it is, you know, it, it is, it's, it's completely different than me. The singles, have the vampire sound to it. Interesting. Once we get into the, uh, the record. Uh, I did read another quote that said, uh, Vampire Weekend is one of the great indie success stories. Mm. And maybe because of where you came from. And maybe this is, a, this, yeah, it's kind of a personal question, I guess. But, you know, a lot of people assume you you write, you put out a record, you get signed to a label, you're, you've made it and everything. How long did it take Vampire Weekend to start making money to where you could say, now the band is generating stuff and we get to put it in our pockets? There's stuff that can happen in the early days that, you know, where you can collect a little bit of a check. Yeah. But at the same time, you're kind of, you've committed yourself to something that may or may not, you know, yeah. be profitable. <laughs> so you can pick up a check, but then you can also, I mean, no matter what you do, you're going to have to work. Sure. And and there's a, there's a degree of uncertainty to it. So the next record comes out, so, and all of a sudden you're like, well... That one's not working. <laughs> I mean, but you guys haven't had that. It seems like it has been that gradual uh, up the entire time, gradual climb. I think, it, yeah, it was. We, I guess, to answer your question, like we, we, we got a little bit of money to last us. It maybe would have lasted us a couple of years. But yeah. Then it's like. What have you it, done it's not like it's not like when you get a job where you're increasing. You're you're like on a track where you know five five years from now you're gonna get a raise and yeah. you're gonna get a promotion sure, sure. and stuff like that. Yeah, so the music. it's kind of like it's in your hands. Well, I guess that level of success though 
you know, it, it afforded you guys a lot to get out there and see the world. What was interesting from album one to album two, for a lot of bands, when you're writing about your travels, you're gonna write about the road, you're gonna write about the airplane, and that didn't really happen with Vampire Weekend. In fact, I, and, and I really do mean this, I'm not gonna be lying, I saw the world through a different kind of way that I would most bands on their second record. The second record becomes forever, right? Uh, I, you know, it, it was through countries and, and politics, too. We like the idea that, you know, you can sort of take away whatever you want from the record. Yeah. Well, I guess that's it, because, because a lot of bands will shy away from writing about politics at all. And I never got it that, like, you guys were saying, we're gonna, you know, this is how where we stand. But there are political themes, kind of, uh, you know, kind of yes. slid underneath and everything. And when you're uh, when you're out and everything, and your fans are listening to you, it becomes kind of a mirror. Like, you know, when your lyrics are, you you gotta be that band. Even when you're not writing the lyrics, you know, as if Ezra's writing the lyrics or whatever. I, I think you guys have all kind of got to stand up for them, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't I don't think we'd be in. The, none of us would want to be in the band if we didn't believe it. Yeah. I mean, has there ever been a point where you're like, man, we just can't say that? Well, I'm, this is not the answer to your question specifically, but I mishear things all the time. Yeah. So I usually, do, I'm not even sure what, when, it, when <laughs> songs helpful. sort of arise and we start playing it. Like the line, spare your face the razor. Uh -huh. For a long time I heard as, you're scared to face the razor. <laughs> so I, I thought that and was, like, that yeah, was I know, we cannot man, sing I that, we cannot sing that. But it was a good thing that CT pointed that out, because we did a lot, we had to find the right takes to make sure <laughs> that they did, that Ezra didn't sound like he was saying <laughs> razor. There was, there was a few lyrics on Fingerback that were revised, that Ezra wanted to revise, sort of after we recorded, or when we were in the mixing stage, and we just kind of like threw a microphone up and revised them, but yeah, I think, you know, I think you're right, there, there's definitely a, um, there's a political element to our songs and uh, you know we like to think it's a subtle one but it's still I would powerful agree that one. it is. I know you guys also had to answer for a lot in the early days beyond the music too, whether it was the way it looked, whether it was your influence. Is that as important now, three albums in, as it was during the day? Because that's all, it seemed like every interview that's what it was about and these days I feel like people are finally getting away from it. Well those, I think that we've now put out enough albums and sort of we can exist on our own terms. I mean, I think that's natural. For us, maybe it was a little heightened, but that's natural. When a band puts out a debut that there's no context for it, you just have to say, oh, that's what does it story, remind me right, of? That sort yeah. of thing. Uh, but those questions have, have, by and large, fallen away, I think. Except in, nice. in this meta context. Yeah, well, which, which is nice, because it is such strong music. Uh, I've enjoyed everything, all three records, the entire trilogy of Vampire Weekend. I can't oh, thank you very much. I mean, now that there's going to be a fourth one, that's like Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skulls, but hopefully a lot better. So. I like that movie. I can stand with you on that, but it could have been better. 